Welcome to FTE 5701 Performance Flight Test. Aircraft performance can be defined as the ability of an aircraft to climb, accelerate, or maneuver in order to successfully accomplish its mission. Obviously, expected performance specification must be an integral part of the design process of an aircraft. Given certain performance expectations by the customer, the designer must make decisions regarding wing size, power plant selection, airfoil selection, wing shape, and many, many other considerations. All of these help to tailor the design to give the aircraft the desired performance characteristics. There are many references for aircraft performance. I've listed the main ones used in building the material for this course. I've also used pictures and diagrams found on the internet. Since Florida Tech's primary mission is to educate students, we are authorized as faculty members to use other people's work for educational purposes. While we try to document sources as much as possible, we are actually allowed to use information without documenting the sources for lectures. So please don't bring me up on plagiarism charges. When it comes to material paid for by U.S. tax dollars, which is the case for U.S. Air Force and Navy test pilot schools, as well as the military academies, the material is assumed to be public domain. Aeronautical engineering is the application of physics to atmospheric flight. For convenience, aeronautical engineering can be arbitrarily divided into several interrelated subdisciplines. Note that aircraft performance is just one of these subdisciplines and is particularly concerned with dynamics, the study of forces, energy, and motion. Specifically, performance looks at how an aircraft climbs, accelerates, or maneuvers to successfully accomplish a mission. Modern methods analyze and evaluate how effectively an aircraft gains or loses mechanical energy. Terms like agility and energy maneuvering describe managing aircraft energy state rather than managing trajectory. One specific models describing forces and motion for flight vehicles have been developed. They can be examined to identify aircraft features which are important in design, testing, and operations. This understanding sharpens intuition about how aircraft behave and develops competence in describing aircraft motion. Both are essential, even for those who are not aeronautical engineers. To success in flight test, we need both for planning and execution and in communicating test results to designers, engineers, and operators who are the end users of results of that testing. We'll break down aeronautical engineering into eight sub-disciplines. The goal of aerodynamics is to understand and predict lift and drag. Propulsion is how we generate thrust or power, and structures involves how we support, protect, and transport payloads. There are full undergraduate college courses for each of these sub-disciplines. We'll cover the highlights of aerodynamics and propulsion in this course. Structures, however, will not be reviewed. Although performance and stability control are similar topics, in fact, they are often grouped together and called flight sciences. They, however, do have some significant differences. Performance is the study of forces acting on the aircraft and how those forces affect aircraft trajectory. Performance takes a far away view and usually looks at the aircraft as a point mass. Aircraft orientation and point of application of individual forces are usually not relevant. In contrast, stability and control is a close up view of the aircraft. The primary concerns are the moments acting on the aircraft and how those moments affect rotation and orientation of the aircraft. Forces and their points of application are interesting only as they create moments. 
performance and stability control are generally unconcerned with how forces and moments are created. They simply assume the forces and moments are known. Aerodynamics and propulsion, on the other hand, are concerned with understanding how forces are created and predicting those forces. Although aerodynamics, propulsion, performance, and stability control can be arbitrarily separated to make studying them easier, they are closely coupled by the fact that the aircraft and engine may produce forces when the aircraft changes its orientation. Performance can be subdivided into steady state performance and dynamic performance. Steady state performance considers forces in equilibrium or quasi-equilibrium. In this case, velocity and other flight path characteristics are either constant or changing so slowly that their rates of change can be neglected. Quasi-steady state rate of climb or acceleration depends on excess power, which varies slowly during maneuvers. In contrast, dynamic maneuvers, something like a split S, involve rapidly changing flight parameters and accelerations parallel and normal to the flight path, and they must be considered along with the basic parameters which describe steady state performance. Performance requirements originate with aircraft users. Performance is a primary consideration in the sale of an aircraft to the individual owner, an airline, or the military. An individual aircraft owner purchases an aircraft to meet specific needs for range, takeoff distance, payload, and cruise speed. Airliners must have sufficient range, payload, and cruise performance to produce revenue and must satisfy FAA minimum performance requirements to be certified to carry passengers or cargo. In the military, using commands specify performance requirements that provide an operational capability to perform a mission. Buying an airplane implies an expensive business transaction and the buyer will be very concerned that his or her specifications are met. Aircraft operators must accurately describe the performance goals they want the aircraft to meet. Contractors and flight testers must accurately describe aircraft performance so the operator or the buyer can determine if his or her goals have been met. If a new aircraft is designed and developed, the contractor specifies performance guarantees. The contractors are normally required to provide complete estimates of aircraft performance in performance consistent with flight manual and performance data charts. Designers make decisions regarding aircraft shape and engine selection to achieve airframe performance and operational characteristics described by the customer. These decisions must be integrated and optimized to achieve performance and cost goals, and every decision has a profound impact on what the aircraft looks like and how much it costs, as well as how well it flies as it's performed its mission. Optimizing an aircraft design requires extensive use of aerodynamic and propulsion software models to predict performance. Aerodynamic models are relationships between lift drag and angle of attack. Propulsion models predict thrust or power and fuel consumption as functions of flight condition and control settings. Mission requirements drive performance requirements and performance requirements drive aircraft design. With this in mind, aircraft performance may also be defined as the ability of the aircraft to carry a payload in a particular speed, altitude, and maneuver envelope over a particular distance. This payload may in turn have its own performance requirements. For example, a radar may have range or angle resolution, clutter rejection, etc. This ability to place the payload in a desirable operational condition is the entire reason for existence of an aircraft. Systems engineering and integration is making it all work together. Mission effectiveness of the whole aircraft is some combination of aircraft performance and payload performance and how well the two are integrated together. It is certain that performance characteristics of real aircraft will not have the same as those planned or predicted by the designer. It is essential to quantify where actual performance differs from what the designer intended and the customer desires. 
Herein lies the need for performance flight testing. Performance flight testing has been increasingly used to validate aerodynamic and propulsion models used in design. Validating these models greatly reduces performance flight testing requirements, which greatly reduces cost and time required to test new or modified aircraft. Once actual performance has been quantified in flight test, the models can be made more accurate, problems in the design can be fixed, and insight can be developed for using the aircraft operationally. Understanding development, validation, and use of aerodynamic and propulsion models is essential to future aircraft performance test programs. Performance flight testing can also accomplish several other fundamental purposes. One, determine if the aircraft meets performance specification or requirements defined in the customer statement of need. Two, provide data for flight manuals used by operational aircrew. Three, determine techniques and procedures used by operational aircrew to attain optimum aircraft performance or accommodate adverse performance. And four, obtain data to advance aeronautical science or develop new flight test techniques. Operators are usually unconcerned with details of how forces are produced and controlled or how forces are supported. They generally don't care about the details of aircraft design. They also generally are unconcerned about details of obtaining flight test data, so long as they are confident the test conditions adequately model operational use of the aircraft. They want to know what the aircraft can do, how easy it is to fly while using the mission payload or systems, and how much it costs in order to affect decisions about how the aircraft is put together. Unlike operators, flight test pilots, navigators, and engineers must be concerned with the details of aircraft design, performance analysis, and flight test in order to meet the operator's needs for information about their aircraft. As aircraft become more sophisticated, better methods of performance prediction, analysis, and testing will be required. Experimental test pilots, navigators, and flight test engineers must lead in developing these tools. The material in this course provides a foundation for the competence needed to provide that leadership. This is a hybrid course where the basic theoretical concepts are delivered in pre-recorded lectures and the face-to-face -face live instruction covers airplane performance elements, flight test techniques, flight labs, and data analysis methods. We'll use tools learned in college dynamics courses to calculate performance. This simple description of calculating performance is a little misleading because aerodynamics, propulsion, and dynamics are tough problems. The only way to solve them is to break them down into manageable pieces, do the small calculations, reassemble the results back into the whole picture, and hope nothing got left out along the way. This can be a long road, and a map is essential to keep the big picture in mind. The formulation of the complete governing equations for fluid motion and the equations of motion for solid bodies can be daunting to students. Once the equations are developed, they must be simplified to be solved. This simplification is distinctly different from formulating the governing equations. Simplifying the equations also seems complex to students if they do not know where they are in the big picture or if they do not take the time to appreciate the physical meaning and appropriateness of the assumptions. This appreciation includes why the simplifying equations work and what limitations they impose on the solutions when they are applied to real problems. In many cases, students are hopelessly lost by the time the equations are solved, and the most important part of the course, solving these equations to find forces, is therefore lost on the students. Using pre-recorded lectures that can be rewound is an attempt to prevent that tragedy. The objective of this course is to understand how the sum of the forces affects motion of the aircraft along its trajectory and how the aircraft gains and loses energy. In this course, once total force and mass are known, Newton's second law can be simplified to an algebraic equation 
and solved directly to yield insight about the forces acting on the aircraft and the motion created by those forces. Energy state can be calculated directly using information in hand. This description of aircraft motion completely describes aircraft performance and provides simple rule of thumb type models that answer questions like, how well can the aircraft accelerate or climb? How far or how long will the aircraft fly on a load of fuel? What length of runway is required for takeoff and landing? What's the aircraft's maximum sustained turn rate? Other applications requiring very precise information, for example, flight simulation, flight control systems, tracking algorithms, may subsequently integrate accelerated, acceleration numerically with respect to time to get velocity and position and integrate with respect to path to get trajectory. Performance is simple, simply the application of dynamics to the results of aerodynamics and propulsion. This type of analysis is essential to virtually all engineering for things that move. It also explains why dynamics is taught rigorously to undergraduate engineers and students, and the skill and the basics of dynamics is essential for flight testers. I recommend reviewing the pre-recorded lectures before starting the face-to-face -face instruction. But if you're not able to get through all of them, that's fine you'll still be able to fly the labs, record, and analyze the data. The exam, however, will have questions on the content of the pre-recorded lectures, but only those lectures shown in blue, up through reciprocating engines. The exam will not include questions on high-speed aerodynamics or jet engines. Your course grade will be 50% from the final exam and 50% from the final lab report. I'll provide more information during the face-to-face -face week. Again, welcome to FTE 5701 Performance Flight Test. We hope you enjoy the experience and learn to the level needed to do the job. We're not trying to trip you up. We want you to know all the answers. If you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to ask your academic instructor or your pilot.